diabetes is very difficult to manage. It's a lifelong disease. It affects people every day of their life. So we aim to make it easier for patients. The Translational Research Institute for Metabolism and Diabetes is located in Orlando, Florida. It's the product of a unique affiliation between Sanford Burnham and Florida Hospital. In fact, we're one of the largest hospitals you've never heard of. This joint venture between Sanford Burnham and Florida Hospital is quite unique in that it helps us to be able to stay grounded and keep our focus on human disease because after all that's what we're trying to cure. We do fundamental work around the pathobiology of diabetes, why diabetes develops, and how we can treat with novel approaches diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular disease. TRI has several very unique capabilities. First and foremost are room calorimeters where we can study how many calories people burn and whether they burn fat, carbohydrate, or protein. Secondly, we do in-depth magnetic resonance spectroscopy using MRI machines to probe metabolism. That's another very unique uh, resource that we have. And then lastly, our ability to combine patient investigation with biorepositories and advanced laboratory techniques for biomarkers are really a key to our success. Based upon our work here at the TRI, we're developing new ways of thinking about how we can take people who don't normally respond to exercise and help them more effectively exercise. One of the key components of our research is to better understand how exercise exerts its health benefits and why it works. Many factors will help in weight loss. It can be broken down into simple terms of energy balance, calories in versus calories out. But that simple equation can become very complex when you start considering that when people actively lose weight, energy metabolism can actually slow down. And this is typically referred to as a metabolic adaptation. So as it turns out, they have to do more exercise to get the same energy deficit and benefit. Both of our research institutes are really well set up to do translational research. So going from humans to animal models and back. So we're very well set up here at the TRI to perform tissue samples that we can analyze in-house. So it's really one-stop shopping for the clinical translational researcher to do the human studies here, to analyze the samples here, to do the data analysis here, and to really get a, a complete picture of the entire clinical translational research spectrum. One of the things that we hope to achieve is to better understand how and why exercise works. If we can understand the how and why or the mechanisms by which exercise exerts its health benefits, we can hone in on better targeted therapies, whether it's exercise therapies or weight loss therapies or even drug therapies to improve metabolism. We have extraordinary resources in research at the Diabetes and Translational Research Institute. Our clinical research unit, over 54,000 square feet dedicated to diabetes and obesity research, has both inpatient and outpatient beds. Our clinical work is fully integrated with our research work. Uh, we provide excellent care uh, and education for patients in the Orlando area. Our team of 14 diabetes educators does most of the diabetes education, and we do diabetes management at an advanced state. And at one end of the spectrum, we offer them the ability to participate in advanced therapies that are not even in the uh, clinic yet through our clinical research studies. In the clinical setting, our novel diabetes education and management programs address uh, health disparities in Latino and African American populations in uh, the Orlando area. So we have seen excellent clinical outcomes in terms of improving overall diabetes management and we're seeing great engagement in these programs. So people are learning about diabetes oftentimes for the first time and learning how to better manage it themselves. We've been working very carefully with our Sanford Burnham colleagues to understand how certain pathways become disrupted in, in diabetes in particular but also in obesity. People here work on either heart or skeletal muscle. I work on fat tissue. Some people work on the brain because uh, all of these organs are integrated for being able to control when you're hungry, when you're not, when your body needs fuel, when it doesn't, when is there too much. Hormones that are made in the heart that are well understood for blood pressure actually also regulate fat metabolism. In particular, we found that they regulate a kind of fat cell called a brown fat cell, which 
burns fuel instead of stores it. It makes heat, so it's a net sink for energy. So if we can increase energy expenditure, then perhaps we can increase lower people's body weight and metabolic disease. With my TRI colleague, Rich Prattley, uh, we are going to test in human subjects whether infusing them with one of these heart hormones, whether it will over time cause an increase in the numbers of these brown adipocytes that burn energy. And if so, then we will have been able to very quickly get to that proof of concept. And that's another thing that's also very powerful uh, working with the TRI. We can get to an answer that is relevant or not to humans quickly, rather than spin our wheels trying to cure mice. It's like solving a puzzle. We all get very excited about what's the next piece in this puzzle? And then knowing that it could potentially have important ramifications for patients is, is a really good feeling.